Hey, friendly neighborhood immunologist here, and today we're going to talk Novavax. What is it and how does it work? I can tell you what it isn't. It is not an mRNA-based vaccine. It is not a viral vector-based vaccine. So it is unlike any of the vaccines in the U.S. on the market right now. So if you were a little uncomfortable with mRNA vaccines, if you were a little uncomfortable hearing about the blood clots in the news, Novavax could potentially be a very good option for a certain population of people. It really is more traditional. Protein-based vaccines have been used for decades at this point. It's how the HPV vaccine works, and that's been very effective. It's also how some influenza vaccines work, so it's a bit more of a tried-and-true mechanism. And I can't wait to show you how it works and tell you what it has to do with moths. So let's get started. Novavax is a company in the United States, and they are based out of Maryland. And they've primarily been working on vaccines. And they have come up with a new option for people in um, North America to try. This is a protein-based vaccine. And what I mean by that is it's only the COVID spike protein. So there's no mRNA and there's no viral vectors. It's really just the COVID spike protein. So this is actually more traditional. I think I mentioned earlier that this is how the HPV vaccine works, but if you've had any um, hesitancy again because of things in the news, really it's just a protein, and then if it's a protein by itself, there needs to be an immune activator, and I'll explain what that is. This particular immune activator is naturally derived. All right, so I'm drawing you some COVID spike proteins here, and what they did you can't just sort of have them floating around your body. It doesn't attract the attention of the immune system. So I'm gonna draw them in orange here. We'll keep them orange for the video. They attach them to a nanoparticle. It's typically in the shape of like a small sphere or small tube so that multiple COVID spike proteins can be attached at once. It's a rather clever idea. And it has about a 96% um, efficacy meaning that it is about as effective as the two mRNA uh, vaccines available currently. Okay, so how? How did they assemble these COVID spike proteins onto a nanoparticle? And I'm gonna tell you about that right now. The first thing they needed was DNA for the COVID spike protein. All right, so they didn't make these in a lab. They actually took the COVID spike protein DNA. And what they did is they introduced it to another virus, but your body is never seeing this virus. It's a baculovirus. You've probably never heard of these. I hadn't until I looked into Novavax because it's a virus that only affects insects. Yeah, so that's why we haven't heard of them because they pretty much never get people sick. So here we go, I'm gonna color code the DNA orange because it's going to help make copies of the spike protein. So if you're not familiar, it always goes DNA into RNA and RNA into protein. So this is the final step. They took the baculovirus, which I told you infects insects, and they chose a moth. So you can just take moth cells, you can grow them up in a lab, and they're basically like like a machinery. They're like a Ford or GM plant where you give them the program on how to make the car and they just go ahead and make them all for you. So the moth cell machinery, which is pretty much in the nucleus, they have their own DNA and GNA machinery. They're gonna start cranking out those COVID spike proteins for the researchers. All right, so again, um, the baculovirus gets into the moth cell, takes the DNA into the nucleus. The moth cells make thousands upon thousands of copies of the COVID spike proteins. They are then collected by the researchers, and then they assemble them onto those nanoparticles that I drew for you earlier. So the only thing that you're receiving in your body are the COVID spike proteins attached to a nanoparticle in a shape that would more or less mimic a virus shape. 
So I mentioned the protein by itself is actually not going to activate your immune system. You need to add an immune activator. There's many different types. Um, the researchers here actually chose a very sort of natural and organic choice. So saponin. Saponin is actually derived from, oh, ran off the page there, derived from soap tree bark. So it is just a detergent. But if you would imagine injecting Dawn detergent under your skin, that's pretty irritating. And the fact that it's irritating uh, will activate the immune system. More about saponin, and as I mentioned, tree bark. And no, the cells, they're actually just you inside of your little cells is and so because saponin is a detergent and soap breaks down fat what you're actually going to do is something that's called hemolytic and it just means blood lice what hemolytic means it means some of your blood cells are going to basically get open you are using your dawn detergent to clean a greasy plate so here we have a red blood cell and i'm just showing you that if you injected saponin underneath the skin, uh, it would basically start hemolyzing and like exploding your red blood cells. So anytime you break down red blood cells, your immune system is pretty interested and they get activated. But remember, it's naturally derived. So here, my second point is that um, you're gonna be receiving, if you take Novavax, you'll be receiving a nanoparticle with attached COVID spike proteins. So that's it. You're basically getting soap and COVID spike protein, nothing else. Now I wanna show you how this actually works. I study the immune system for a living, particularly during Alzheimer's disease. And I really think we don't know enough about how our own bodies work. And I'd like to just Tell you quickly how the immune system works in response to a vaccine. So here's the first step. I'll scoot the paper down, it's a little close. The first step is a cell called a macrophage. You can find macrophages in your bloodstream, in your tissue. They're actually particularly helpful and they live in your lungs. One of the things they do best is actually run around your body and eat things that they think are dangerous. That's really its job. So macrophage means large eater. I try to often draw them in pink. All right. So macrophages are going to respond to this opponent, to the pieces of the red blood cells, and they're going to basically move. Um, the technical term is like chemotaxis. So if you think about a taxi moving, they taxi too. They taxi to anything they think is dangerous. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna show up because of the saponin and the lysed blood cells, and they're gonna start cleaning up the mass. And when they do that, they're going to eat the nanoparticle with the COVID spike protein. They're gonna break it down in the stomach portion of the cell. Yes, your cells have stomachs, and they're very acidic, just like yours. And they break down the pieces of the COVID spike protein, and they put them on the outside of the cell so the outside of your cells are where cells communicate. If you'd like to know a bit more detail, they're actually called major histocompatibility type two receptors. And why does that matter? Because macrophages need to show long lived immune cells what they have found. And what they do is when they find something interesting, they break it down, put it on the outside, and then they traffic to a nearby lymph node because lymph nodes are where most of your long-lived memory cells are. So these are called T helper cells, and they really just sort of tell all the other immune cells what to do. They're very important. They can live from anywhere from one year to your entire life, depending on the type of survival signals they get. And they're gonna do something really cool. They're gonna basically match up perfectly with the MHC class two receptor. And if you ever activate your immune system, it really is the equivalent of like going nuclear because you're going to remember this protein for potentially the rest of your life. And so there's a couple of checks and balances. All right, so I'm drawing the T cell receptor here in green, the COVID spike protein in orange, and then the macrophages, MHC class two in pink. 
And they're not always a perfect match, but when they are, the T cell gets activated to the COVID spike protein for potentially the rest of your life. So it doesn't just work that way. This is the first signal. If the T cell receptor matches the MHC class two, you're halfway there. But like I said, going nuclear. So to get signal number two, I'm drawing it in red because that's what the danger signals are from. So all of those lysed red blood cells allow for second signals called basically like danger signals to become activated. So if step one and step two have been completed, the T cell is gonna move on and activate potentially the most important cell for fighting the COVID virus, the B cell. Ah, now I'm gonna scoot us up. I'm drawing Y-shaped things outside the B cell. These Y-shaped proteins are called antibodies and they're going to basically grab, neutralize, and stop COVID from ever entering your cells. Because once a virus gets inside of your cell, the battle becomes much harder. But if you actively have these little Y-shaped antibody nets in your bloodstream, they're gonna grab the virus before the virus ever enters your cell, which is why vaccines are so effective when they're designed well. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna show you what an antibody does to a COVID virus. So let's say you received two shots of the Novavax vaccine and you have these blue antibodies just floating around. They're in your mouth, they're in your lungs, they're in your bloodstream. And if somebody coughed on you, gave you the COVID virus, it would immediately be neutralized with the antibodies in your bloodstream. One con I do want to mention is that the Novavax vaccine is effective towards uh, the original coronavirus. It's not as effective against the variants. It varies between 86% and 50% effective. So that is a detriment I want to mention. If you have any other comments or questions, um, please go ahead and drop them in the comments. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, I have many others about the immune system and vaccines, cancer, Alzheimer's. So please um, hit like and subscribe. Stay healthy.